Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, Dave Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. And today's date is Monday the 12th of February and the time has just gone uh, 12.15pm GMT, 12, 5, quarter past 12 UK time. Uh, as always with the webinars, what I will do is I will leave the risk warning of our slides up on screen here for a, for a, for a few seconds for you guys to have a read through. Uh, it's all fairly straightforward. It essentially states anything that is that is covered in today's webinar uh, should is only my own personal comments and views uh, and opinions and remarks. Uh, they should not be should they, they should not be uh, thought of as explicit investment advice or trading advice. Um, so I'll leave the risk warning on, on screens there. You guys have read through it. I'll just continue to talk over it. It's something that our compliance department uh, will be be uh, be kept happy with. Um, in terms of what's going on, uh, it, uh, in terms of the kind of major news uh, over the over the weekend, uh, we, what we've seen is a quite a decent bounce back um, in European equity markets. Uh, looking at what happened overnight in Asia, we had a fairly decent sell off in Asia overnight. So the pessimism. It's still alive and well in Asia, but given that we had a strong, a strong, a fairly strong session in New York last Friday, uh, the the positive sentiment has spilled over to Europe today. Uh, what, what we've seen is quite a decent bounce back, so we're so we are slowly regaining some of the some of some of the colossal ground that we lost last week. Uh, we're not quite out of the woods yet in terms of back back to levels that we haven't um, back to levels that we haven't seen for two weeks. Uh, but it certainly is in the in the beginning process stages of that. So I'll just, just uh, as always with, with our webinars, uh, I'll give you kind of a brief rundown of, of uh, the structure of the webinar. I'll talk about the major macroeconomic events that are coming out uh, for the for the few trading sessions ahead. What to keep an eye out for. I will also uh, take a look then at the major markets, uh, major indices, currencies, commodities, and then any kind of markets. Uh, that I haven't covered, feel free to type in the chat box or the question box. Just pop in a comment there. I'll happily go, go, go through those those, um, those markets and also show a few bits and pieces on our platform which might be of interest to yourself. So the first thing I'll do, uh, as I said, the kind of main news of the story of the weekend has been that there's been a kind of bounce back in, uh, in European equity markets. In terms of single stock stories, there isn't really a whole lot to go on today. Uh, what we've seen in, in, the, in the financial markets this morning is a bounce, uh, strong commodity prices have led to strong mining companies, Glencore, BHB, uh, Rio Tinto, and the likes have done quite well. Uh, Barclays have been charged by the SFO, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Serious Fraud Office, uh, in relation to activity that, that went on with the bank in late 2008. Uh, in terms of actually individual stories, though, there isn't much to go on. Uh, broadly speaking, it, uh, it's, it's a fairly quiet day in terms of political news and, and macroeconomic news. But we have seen a decent bounce back here in Europe, and we are looking for a higher open in New York. So, for those of you who are familiar with our trading platform, if you go to the Market Pulse tab here, um, and you click on Market Pulse, fourth option down is the Market Calendar. And this is the economic calendar. This maps out the major economic events of the week. And as you can see, today's session is fairly quiet. So, uh, we have some updates from China uh, uh, in early morning and overnight. Uh, but by and large, it is fairly a quiet day in terms of updates uh, from the from a European perspective. So looking ahead to tomorrow, uh, the big one tomorrow morning uh, is going to be CPI inflation figures out from the UK. We're expecting the headline inflation figure to dip to 2.9% from 3%, bearing in mind we, uh, it, that already ticked lower from 31 in the in the previous reading. We'll also get uh, an update on the PPI, the producer price index, and we also get the respective core figures as well as the uh, as the headline figure on top of that, and not to mention retail sales. Um, the pound has had a bit of a, a bit of a sell off in relation to its very good performance versus the US dollar in the last couple of months, but it's still very much in its upward trend. I've been looking at pound versus the US dollar uh, later on in the webinar, uh, but in terms of economic indicators, what else to watch out for tomorrow? It's a reasonably quiet day at the very at the very end of tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night we'll have the Japanese GDP figures coming out. Uh, turning our attention to what's going on on Wednesday, uh, the, big, the big focus of Wednesday is going to be the CP is the, the growth figures coming out uh, on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. out of Germany. Uh, on, on top of that, we also have CPI numbers coming out of Germany in the same report. 
Germany is by far the biggest, most important and influential country in both the Eurozone and the EU. So whatever goes on in Germany can, uh, can actually get, have a big impact on what goes on in the, in the, in the currency block as a whole. Uh, later on in the session, we have GDP figures coming out from Italy at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then, of course, we, ha we have the Eurozone industrial output number as well, which are, are going to be less important. Uh, at half one on Wednesday, we have CPI numbers coming out of the US. That's going to be a big one to keep an eye out for, seeing as uh, with the wage growth numbers uh, in the United States um, recently were decent. Uh, and we could see uh, employees in, in, in the US who are earning more, going out and spending more. And that, that's going to be a particular interest, seeing as the US dollar in recent months has been quite weak. We have seen the US dollar index at multi-year lows. A lower currency could feed into important inflation, and we could see we could see the inflation rate in the United States pick up on the back of that. That's going to be one to watch out for at one, half one on Wednesday, and then at half three Wednesday, as to do every single week, we have the oil stocks inventories. Uh, bearing in mind, um, produ oil production in the United States uh, has has reached uh, has exceeded 10 million dollar 10 million barrels per day, an all-time record for the United States. And we're also looking at here, there's also rumblings that Iran is going to increase uh, their production uh, by about say, 7 or 8 percent over the next four years. Uh, turning our attention to what's going on on Thursday, the early hours of Thursday morning, we have Australian unemployment numbers coming out. Um, and then looking throughout the, the session, we have Spanish CPI at 8 a.m. on Thursday morning. Italian trade uh, figures coming out at 9 o'clock on, on, uh, on Thursday morning. Irish CPI coming out at 11 o'clock on Thursday morning and then scrolling down to lunchtime uh, unemployment claims from the United States coming out at half one on Thursday morning. Uh, what else to watch out for uh, on that particular trading day? Uh, industrial output out of the United States at quarter past two uh, and that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the up important updates to keep an eye out for on Thursday. Uh, the, one to keep an eye out for at the back end of the week, yeah, UK retail sales at half nine on Friday morning, and then also anyone who's trading the Canadian dollar or this dollar CAD, for example, needs to keep an eye out for the manufacturing figures come out of Canada at half one. And then we also have housing charts and housing data coming out and building permits coming out at half one uh, um, from the United States on Friday. And the last big update of the week will, of course, will be will be the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Indicator coming out at three o'clock on Wednesday. Oh, sorry, on Friday rather, last one of the week. So I'll take a quick look now at what's going on in the FTSE 100. Like I said, I'm going to run through some of the major indices, major commodities, major currency pairs. If there are any markets that I haven't co covered, please feel free to type it in the, the chat box and I'll have a quick look at those. So as you can see here, we've had a quite an aggressive sell-off uh, late, late January uh, into, in, into February on the FTSE 100. We are bouncing back though. Um, as you can see, as the market was selling off here, we saw a dramatic increase in negative momentum. And now that we're seeing the market bounce back here on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, we're seeing negative momentum is falling while prices are pushing higher. So the selling pressure is dissipating, the market is moving higher, but but still some traders are concerned though that this, this that this bounce back here is just the new kind of higher lower high before we actually have, have an, the market turns over on itself yet again so whereby an uptrend is characterized by higher highs and higher lows a downtrend is characterized by lower highs and lower lows so as you can see uh, lower low lower high lower low lower high and then lower low so traders now have to have to determine that they, where we are in this area here in around the kind of 7000 just shy of 7200 traders are determining is this the beginning of the of the the correction and is is it the beginning of the push higher and the market will slot in with the wider upward trend or are we looking to bounce back uh, and then potentially to turn lower yet again and that, so in terms of areas to keep an eye out for uh we're currently trading let's say 7182 next level to watch out for should we continue to push higher we'll be in around the 7278 area which acted as um support from late in early December if we go north of that we could be looking at heading up to, and take out 7300 we then could be heading up towards 7400 and if you go north 7400 keep an eye out on, on the 2 day moving average which comes into play in around 7000 
455. It's only really until we're north of, say, the 200-day moving average. Uh, could, we, could, could you then be kind of be could you then begin to feel more confident that they, this that, that, that the positive move uh, is, is going to last? There's always a possibility the market could bounce back, recoup about half of the losses it lost from, say, 7,800 down to south of, say, 7,000. We could see a bounce back towards 7,400, and the market may turn over on itself yet again. And if we do see that, if we do see market turning over on itself, the next level to keep an eye out for to the downside will, of course, be 7,000. South of that, 6,000. 6,919 and then below that down to back towards 6,800 it's quite a similar view um that kind of well the the the, the, um, the kind of vision that i outlined there is quite quite a similar view we've had a colossal sell-off in, in major indices and we even though we, we've we get we, we recouped about a third or a quarter of the losses we have racked up in the last couple of weeks traders are still uncertain is this just the kind of calm before the next storm? Is this a temporary bounce back before the market has another severe leg lower? Or is this the beginning of an actual proper correction? Are we going to retest the recent highs that we achieved uh, about a month ago? So a similar move here in the DAX. Had a colossal sell-off here. Um, and, and now a bounce here last week. We have been pushing lower. So we have been pushing higher in the last few sessions. We've seen a decline in negative momentum so that the, the selling pressure has declined but once again if we, if we do move to move north from here and we're currently just north of 12,300 if you continue to move north from here we could be looking at running through resistance in around the 12,741 level uh, sorry before we get to that area areas we, we could potentially uh, so we're currently in around 12,312 if we push on higher from here we may encounter resistance in around the 12,600 area or north of that at the 2 day moving average, which comes into play in around 12,755. And if you go beyond the 2 day moving average, that will be a, that will be a, kind of a big milestone. And then you, if you should be taking all that level, you can be more confident that the upward move is going to last. And moves beyond that, maybe run, run into resistance or support in, in, into resistance in around the 50 day moving average, which comes into play in around 13,070. Notice how the 50 day moving average, this line here, acted as support on the market uh, as the market was pushing higher so previous support may become future resistance but once again uh, if the market does turn lower from here from these levels in around 12,300 we could be looking looking to head back down towards 12,000 and then down towards 11,900 and then of course the big one to watch out for to the downside will of course be 11,692 the low from last week granted that was in out of hours trading though uh, so that was that, that was when the actual cash market was closed. Um, looking now to what's going on in the United States, the Dow Jones. Once again, it's a very similar picture here across all global equities. So we've had the, the colossal sell-off. We saw the steep rising in negative momentum. Markets are looking looking a bit firmer, starting to push higher, move above some of key, some key levels and, and some important metrics. Corresponding to that, we can see a decline in negative momentum, so selling pressure is clearly dissipating. And we're currently in, in around this price area here of 24,500. So we've, we're back above the 100-day moving average. Uh, the next big level to keep an eye for the upside could be the 50-day moving average in this price action here, uh, which is just north. Just north of uh, it's in around the 25,150 area, and if you go beyond that again, we could be looking, looking up heading up towards 25,588, and then beyond that, looking up towards 26,000. But in a similar vein, uh, should we look, should we kind of, should the, should this, should the, the current positive uh, push higher, run out of steam, and look to, look to go turn lower on itself, we could be looking at heading back down towards. This area here, the the, uh, the low from Friday, at twenty three thousand three hundred sixty, and should we go south of that, we could be looking at heading back down towards twenty three thousand itself. Take a look now at the S and P five hundred. It's uh, once again these in indices in terms of the shape of the chart all look fairly similar. At least the S and P uh, has a has managed to actually get above the um, the 
200 day moving average. So after a, the severe sell off you've seen here, we saw a steady decline in, in negative momentum. So the selling pressure was rising as the market was moving lower. Now we're seeing the market firm up. We're seeing a decline in negative momentum. So we're currently trading in around the 1,492 1, area, which we're currently trading in around here. So we're back above the 200 day moving average, which I saw, I apologize. I'm looking at the, uh, the wrong chart. I do apologize. That was the small cap 200 of uh, the Russell 2000. I was looking at, I do apologize. I was thinking that, that the S&P, um, uh, the, the prices were a bit off. So once again, I apologize. So on the S&P 500 here, we can see the market as the market was turning lower. We saw an aggressive increase in negative momentum. The market did manage to find some support just south in around of the 200 day moving average. This is a good example here of how if you're looking to place either entry prices or stop losses. Um, it's you know put you know putting a precise figure on an area of uh, potential support or resistance can be quite tricky. So a bit of leeway or a bit of um, or a bit of allowance for slippage uh, either side is also something that traders often do. Notice here how the market on a couple of occasions traded just south of the 30 moving average and we've now actually managed to bounce back higher on both occasions. So just a kind of a, a word, of, word of warning in, in relation to putting your stops precisely on certain key levels, be it a certain pivot point or a trend line, or in this case, a moving average. So while we, re we remain north of the, of the 20 moving average, the outlook could remain positive for the S&P 500. So we're currently trading at 2,651 in this area here. We're looking, to, we're pretty much hovering on the 100 day moving average. So the next level to keep an eye out for to the upside could be the 50 day moving average at 2,722. Notice how here last week on Wednesday, the high of the day ran into resistance uh, just north of the tutor, of the 50 day moving average and, and pushed lower. So uh, the previous resistance can also act as resistance again. And should we take out that level in the future, it may be act as support. And if we go north of the 50 day moving average at 2,722, we could be looking heading up towards 2,770. And then beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 2,800. But a move south of this here, this price here, uh, the these two, uh, the, this line here at 2,532, a move south of that will, will create fresh multi-month lows, and we could be looking heading down towards 2,500 on the back of that. Should that happen? So we talked about how we've seen a lot of uh, money, um, a lot of sell-off in the equity markets over the past couple of weeks. Conversely to that, what we've seen in, in gold, and uh, well, gold is classically a flight to quality safe haven asset. But the reason why we did see a decline in, in gold last week was because what triggered the sell off was the, the, the most recent non farm non farm payroll figures from the United States, which showed a decent increase in wage wage growth. But the decent increase in wage growth triggered traders tri triggered fears that the United States is going to raise it's going to do more interest rates than expected this year. At the beginning of the year, traders were thinking about possibly three rate hikes. Now there's, there's room for potentially four rate hikes. And this could be this could be the year the United States kind of turns the corner, as it were, in terms of actually picking up its pace of raising interest rates. And so even though we've seen a lot of money go out of equities, yeah, it doesn't necessarily be a corresponding push high, push into gold because gold and, and the United States interest rates have a history of being negatively correlated. So while the pressure was on equity markets last week, the pressure was also on gold last week for fear we could have a rate rise uh, in March and we could have three we could have we could have up to four rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year. That being said, after the sell off of last week, uh when, when gold traded uh, at its lowest level in about a month last last uh, last Thursday, we have seen a bit of a pushback here in the price of gold. So we really would need to kind of take head head uh, take out just move north of say uh, 1330 or 1340 before we actually look to actually be kind of be sure uh, that the, the the downward move that we've been in since late January has uh, has been snapped out of. If gold does continue to drift lower from these levels, we could be looking ahead and back down towards 1310, uh, 1300 itself. And then potentially low as 1293. Notice how 
the 100 day moving average here acting as both resistance and support in late December. And if you take out that level, uh, 1293, uh, 1280, the 200-day moving average will be the next level to keep an eye out for. Sticking with the commodities team, we'll just have a look now at what's going on in the price of the oil markets. So taking a look now at Brent crude oil. As I was saying, uh, the oil market um, has come under a bit of pressure recently due to fears about oversupply. Production in the United States is at an all-time high. Iran are looking at increasing their production rate by about 7 or 8% over the next four years. And that was the perfect opportunity for traders to cash in, to lock in some of the profits. Because at the end of December, so at the end of January rather, we did see oil prices at three-year highs. So now we've seen a fairly steady uh, inc decrease in the price of oil over the last number of weeks. A combination of a stronger US dollar and also... As I mentioned, fears of oversupply have prompted traders to uh, to push lower on the price of oil to get out of the oil market. So as you can see here, when the market was selling off, we saw a fairly steady increase in negative momentum. So the, the pressure on, on the movement uh, is with the is, is with the is with the bears, is with the sellers. We did manage to kind of drop below the one-day moving average. Now we appear to be back hovering in around the zone. This is, this could be a key metric to keep an eye out for if you can keep north of the 100 day moving average we could be looking at heading heading higher again uh, we, so as a way of kind of fitting in with the overall positive trend because the oil market has been in a positive trend since last June um, so this level could be could be an area to keep an eye out for here uh, this, this price action of 61.24 which coincides with say the November lows if we move south of 61.24 that could be an indicator that the market is going to is, is going to continue to turn lower. And should we go lower from 61.24, we could be looking at heading at $60 a barrel, or possibly even down as $59.51, which was the high from September. But if you manage to hang hang north of uh, 61.24, we could potentially kind of fall in with the resume the, the wider upper trend that has been in place over the last six months. So should you push higher from here? We could be looking at running the resistance in around the 50-day moving average at uh, six, which comes into play in around six to seven dollars, uh, and then north of that we could be looking at heading towards 68, 69, so on and so forth. Take a look now. It's a very similar looking chart on West Texas Intermediate WTI. As I was saying, uh, if you have any kind of comments or any markets you, you want me to cover. Feel, uh, feel free to just comment in the uh, in the question box or the chat box. I'll happily look at some markets that you want me to cover. So as I mentioned, uh, we're not we're not looking at WTI. Fairly similar chart to what we've seen here um, on Brent. The wider trend uh, for the last six months has been positive. Class example of higher highs and higher lows. This price, the price action that we, that we achieved here at the end of January was a three-year high. But like, as I said, fears of oversupply, strong U.S. dollar has driven the price of oil lower and what we've seen since then as the market was pushing lower a steady increase in negative momentum so the, the downward price has been confirmed by the, this, the steady rise in negative momentum but for this but if you look here the price uh it's, it's bounced off of friday we're off of friday's lows we're, we're edging higher but if you take out the 50 day moving average at 61.21 we could be looking at heading up retesting 62 and then north of that, we could be looking at heading back up towards 64. But an area to keep an eye out for, of course, would be the recent low of 50, $58.10. And if you go south of that, an area to keep an eye out for could be the, the, the December low of 55.72, or perhaps even the November low of 54.76. If you go if you go through these levels, then we could be an indicator that the market is potentially looking at turning over on itself and heading back down, back down towards. 53.59 or, or possibly even down towards the 30 moving average at 52.53. Review sterling Japanese yen. Yes, it will. I'm just actually coming out to uh, currency pairs now and uh, I will do a sterling yen in, in a few minutes' time. First of all, we'll have a look at the euro dollar. So the wider trend. Uh, blank chart. So the wider trend has been quite positive throughout 2017 and early 2018 on the euro versus US dollar. As you can see here, we're talking 
at the beginning of this year, we saw levels not seen since the end of 2014. So we're talking about three-year highs recently achieved on the euro dollar. So the big picture um, trend is to the upside. Uh, we, we have seen, though, a bit of a retracement from the three-year high. We're, we're edging higher here again. Uh, we would, as you can see, when you see the, the price is, set, is selling off here and we're seeing an increase in negative momentum, so we could have potential further grounds for uh, a further decline, possibly down back down towards 122 or even down the low here of, of January of 121.65. And if you go south of that, we could be looking at back down towards um, 120.92, which is the early, which is the high from the early January. Uh, but if you do manage to push higher here, the first level to keep an eye for to the upside is around the 123.30 level. If you break 123.30, we could be looking heading back up towards 124, 125, and then of course in that area, we'll be looking at retesting the three-year highs. Keeping a look now, what's going on the pound versus the US dollar? Like I said, we have British CPI and also retail sales figures coming out this week, so a lot of volatility could be uh, injected into the pound versus the US dollar. So the big picture over the last 10 months since March last year, to draw a low a line from the lows of March last year to the, to the lows of August last year. Granted, it, it did manage to trade uh, south of it on a, a number of occasions. Um, but broadly speaking, if the, if, the, if, the, if the currency pair is north of sterling, the dollar is north of this, of this trend, it's, uh, it's likely to have a, have a bullish outlook. This is also another example of what I was talking about, about having your entry, your other stop losses or your stops or your limits um, too fixated on, on a certain exact price. Um, you know, you're not always going to see the market turn uh, potentially at a, at a precise price. So it's often good to have some leeway factored into where you're looking at placing your stops or your limits. It'd be very unfortunate if you put a limit buy in here thinking it's an upward trend and you buy the dip. And it just trades ever so slightly below the trend line, and you get taken out. Uh, and, and so, and vice versa. If it, there are occasions whereby a market will trade north of north of a certain uh, metric, uh, and then uh, reverse again. So just be be mindful of whereabouts you, uh, you you place your entries and your exits. So the big picture uh, for the last ten months has been to the upside. Granted, after hitting an eighteen month high here or nineteen month high here, we have started to trade lower. But as you can see here, as the market's pushing lower, we've seen a steady increase in negative momentum. So this negative move may continue. Um, if we manage to take out the recent low of 137.64, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here. The 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around 136.77, or perhaps even down as low as the as uh, 135.48. 135.48 is, of course, the uh, the high from December. But and, and, and then if you do move back down towards the trend line, we could be looking at somewhere in the region of around 134.85. Uh, these are prices you need to keep an eye out for, should we be, look south. If we manage to hold above the uh, the recent low here, uh, and they continue to push higher, if it holds north of 137.64, we could be looking at heading back up towards testing the 140 mark. And of course, if you go north of 140, we could be looking ahead towards 141, 142, so on and so forth. Bearing in mind, um, it was the EU referendum uh, in June 2016. It's when the pound versus US dollar had that major sell-off overnight on the back of the result. Uh, before the before the just before the polls were closed at night at 10 p.m., uh, pound US dollar was somewhere in the region of 150. So when people talk about having you know 19 month highs on the pound versus US dollar, it will have to exceed. We will have to go north of 150 before we we'll actually look at having multi-year highs created. I'll take a look now what's going on with the euro versus the British pound. Then, I, then I'll cover dollar yen and then I'll cover sterling yen. Uh, so the, the big picture over the last few months um, has been you, has been the euro kind of losing ground versus the, versus the uh, versus the, the British pound. As you can see here, it's had a fairly decent floor in around zero spot. 86.98. These two are, this this line between these two lows here was also a fairly steady uh, low series of lower highs. So we're, we're kind of trapped in a fairly tight range on this particular currency pair. And uh, in terms of areas to keep an eye out for, 
if uh, the last few, few sessions we have seen that the uh, the currency pair head towards the higher end of the range that we faded recently, and that's been corresponded or been confirmed with the increase in positive momentum. So should we move higher on from here? We could be looking at tracking at zero spot 89 or zero spot 89.29. And if you go north to zero spot 89.29 and take off the January high, we could be looking at heading up up to zero spot 90. But if you kind of keep in if you keep in the recent trend of lower highs, we could be looking at heading back back down towards zero spot 88, or potentially even back down towards the uh, the, the 2018 low and also the December low uh, of zero spot 86.89. I'll take a look now at the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. So just before we get on to the dollar yen, are there any other markets you'd like me to cover outside of sterling yen? Feel free to just type it in the, in the, uh, the chat box. So taking a look at dollar yen, as I mentioned in the talk about the Federal Reserve, uh, there's, been a lot of, there's been a bit of a bounce back in the US dollar. There's fears we could have four rate rises from the United States in 2018. Uh, and what we've seen here on the dollar versus the versus the yen over basically since November has been a fairly steady downward trend. Um, as you can see, you know, lower low here, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and lower low. So as you can see only on last Thursday, sorry, that, that's Friday rather, um, it, it, we haven't seen the, uh, the, the US dollar fall to that level versus Japanese Japanese yen since September. So talking basically about a five month low on the, on the dollar yen was achieved on the uh, back end of last week. So that kind of also kind of sums up what the kind of the, the recent trend has been. It's clearly clearly been to the downside. If we continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking at taking out 108. And if you take out 108, then everyone's going to keep an eye on beyond that. Uh, it will potentially be the September low of 107.32. And then, of course, if you go below that, we'll be looking heading heading back towards multi-year lows or, or uh, multi-week lows, heading back down towards uh, levels not seen since, since day 2016. So we could be looking at heading back down towards 106. But should we kind of snap out of the downward trend, or should, should the market actually look to, uh, to push on higher from here? It would need areas that potentially could run into resistance might be in a 109.77. As you can see, you're active resistance on a couple of occasions at the beginning of the month. And if you go north of that, we could be looking at heading up towards 110.84. 110.84 being the low from November. And the, uh, the uh, as I said, what acted as support in the past may act as resistance in the future. But really, the big level to keep an eye out for on dollar into the upside will, of course, be the Trinity moving average at 111 spot 62. Notice on a, few, a number of occasions when, when the market was beginning its kind of this, this descent in 2018, it traded. Through the, the trinity moving average, it hung around the area on a couple of occasions. It acted as resistance on a couple of occasions, so it does have experience um, looking acting as resistance, and for that reason, it could act as resistance again in the future. I'll just have a look now at the comments that you guys are writing. Yep, uh, dollar Swissy and dollar Cal. Yep, sure, no worries. I'll just have a look at those now. I got on, on to Sterling yen first of all. Just taking a quick glance at starting again, see what the kind of the wider picture has been. So since late 2018, October 2018, starting again has been in a fair, not a, not obvious, but it's been in, in a uh, in, an, in an upward trend. So the kind of wider picture, the wider view has, has been to the upside on the, on the pound versus the Japanese yen. Let's turn it over now to a daily chart. So it's also once again fairly evident, even though we've seen some quite wide swings, uh, it's still kind of higher highs and higher lows on the dollar versus the Japanese yen. 
So, so we had a fairly decent sell-off since the beginning of February, and as the market's been selling off, we've seen a fairly steady increase in negative momentum. So the momentum is clearly with the seller. So this this downward move that we are seeing could last. So if we move, if we continue to move south from here, uh, because if you've traded south of the one-day moving average, it appears to be re running into resistance at the one-day moving average in around. 150 spot 89 if we, if we, if we hold south of, of that level of that metric the next level to keep an eye for the downside could be the recent low of 149 spot 00, zero. Um, and then south of that back down towards the 30 moving average at 147 spot 54 and then if we go below that area we could be looking heading back down towards say 145 ish but if you do manage to retake the 50 the one day moving average the next big level to keep an eye out for to the upside will this be this, this this spike here which is which was created only last Thursday at 154.04 if, if you take out that that higher there that could be a kind of confirmation potentially that the market is going to resume the upper trend that we've been in and then we, we could be looking heading up back up towards in the direction of 157 and then 158 and so on uh, that is I'm gonna cover these couple of, as it's uh, we've got five minutes over 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 the over the over, sh over schedule, which is no hassle. But I'll cover uh, dollar dollar Swissy and dollar CAD, and then look to wrap things up. So we can see here that the US dollar has been in a fairly downward trend versus the, the Swiss franc uh, over, over the past year or so. Um, and then more recently, the, the sell-off really has accelerated. So the big, picture, the, kind of the big picture trend is to the downside. And what we're seeing here is we are seeing a bit of a bounce back. So the market is just pushing higher, uh, re recouping some of the losses. Momentum has swung from firmly being in the red uh, in, in, into positive territory now. So we are seeing the market bounce back from these levels. But the question is, are we going to bounce back, run into some resistance, and then turn over on itself, and then look to retest the recent lows, and then print lower lows? Or is this going to be a move that actually um, snaps out of the downward trend? So notice here how the first thing I see in, the, in this price area here, in around zero spot, the, the, recent, the recent high, uh, which is achieved only last Wednesday at a zero spot 45 90, 94 94 94 70 notice how this this price area here kind of coincides with the with the lows from July and August and September so it's run into resistance it's pushing higher here notice how it's ran into the, uh, the what was the previously support and now we've actually been kind of shunted lower yet again so even though we are moving higher, you, kind of, you really would need to see it at the very least and move, nor uh, move north of zero spot 9500 to kind of get the indication that you know we are, we are snapping out of it. Beyond that, we, then we, we, we could then be looking up towards uh, the, the, um, the January highs of in around zero spot 9668 and then up towards the trading moving average in a zero spot 9717. So we, we, we got a few hurdles to get over before we can actually look at uh, assuming that the downward trend is over. Move to the downside. If the market does manage, fails to kind of clear a 0 spot 0.95 or a 0 spot 0.96, the market could turn over on itself yet again because it's been in a fairly, down, fairly obvious downward trend for the past year at least. Areas to keep an eye out for the downside will, of course, the first level to keep an eye out for will be the recent low of 0 spot 0.9256. And then looking back down towards zero, zero spot 92 itself. I'm just going to wrap up things now with the US dollar and the Canadian dollar in terms of charting. And then I'll show you a couple of things on our platform. So looking now at the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. So the big picture has been the dollar CAD as we move into the downside. Um, notice how here though that the market was in a lower trend. And it has managed to kind of push higher. Um, so the low here failed to take out the recent low here in September. So this could be the, the point where the dollar looks to kind of push higher against the Canadian dollar. Um, and if you, and as you can see, 
in, in February, the market's been pushing higher, and that's, that's also been confirmed uh, by MACD in histogram. Uh, we've seen a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. If the market's pushing higher from here, we really would need to kind of move north of, say, the 126.66 level or 127 level uh, to kind of to be more confident that this upward trend is going to last. And should we move north of that, we then we need to, we, we would like to see the 200 moving average at 127.59 being taken out. Notice how in December the market rallied towards the 200 moving average, didn't quite get there, and then ran out of steam, and then went, then went on a fairly decisive downward move. If the market can't um, maintain it, it, its positive momentum and manages to turn over itself yet again, we could be looking at heading it back down towards 125, and then south of that, 126, and then the recent lows, uh, which were created only a few days ago at 122.57, and then if we move south of that, we could be looking at heading back towards the September low of 120.61. So that's it in terms of the actual markets that actually covered. While you're here, I just want to show you a couple of things on our on our trading platform. Some of the updates that myself and my fellow market analysts here at CFC Markets do get updated on insights. Uh, insights can be found under Market Pulse. Second option down is insights. We're also going to be uh, talking. About, we also do updates throughout the day in terms of economic data releases or through any uh, central bank uh, updates, any kind of particular important comments. They'll get put on Insight. Also, there's going to be a recording of this webinar posted on Insight within the next hour or so. On top of that, uh, as I, as I, uh, in, in a similar vein to what I've just done on the webinar itself, uh, in the Chart Forum section, which is under Market Pulse, third option down, Chart Forum, every day myself and, and, my, and my colleagues here at CFC Markets will uh, we'll, we'll do a few Chart Forum updates where I would take a particular chart that we think is interesting we write a few hundred words about it, and we, we, we map out potentially, potentially important levels uh, in terms of price action to keep an eye out for. On our platform, on the actual website itself, rather, uh, on, on cmcmarkets.com, if you go to the news and analysis section, this is which, I, which I've already highlighted here, it gives you a breakdown. Some of the updates that we do in terms of written content gets posted here to our the news analysis section. Some of it gets posted to the inside, and, and uh, some of it goes on both. Uh, so feel free to keep an eye and, and read through the articles that are that are posted uh, around the globe from, from myself and market analysts in other offices. And also on the uh, the Learn tab, if you take a look at the uh, webinars and events, uh, where you found out where you found the the the, the update for this webinar, uh, just to, to let you know, on Wednesday the 14th of February at 19:30 GMT, half 7 p.m. UK time, we have a webinar cover, covering covering. Uh, live trading key global indices and then of course next Monday I'll be back in the hot seat uh, doing the 12-15 Monday market update that'll be Monday the 19th of February and then of course on Wednesday the 21st of February at 7 p.m. 7.30 p.m. UK time 19.30 GMT uh, we're also ha having another webinar a guide to modern technical analysis uh, so please feel free to sign up to future webinars uh, I do want to thank you for your time and your, and your patience. I hope you found this, this webinar interesting and, and, and informative. And for all of us here at CMC Markets this week, I hope you have a good day and a good trading week. Thank you very much.